As Americans, we are free to pursue happiness. That's spelled out in the Declaration of Independence. Whether we'll find it is another matter. Time Magazine has been looking into happiness. That's the subject of a cover story in the current issue. Jeffrey Kluger is Time's editor at large. And Jeffrey, good morning. Good morning. So we're a country founded on this principle. Um, philosophers right. have mm. talked about it for centuries. How happy are we? Well, we are less happy than we would like to be. In 2004, 79% of us called ourselves optimists. We are now down to 50%. Mm. About 20% of us will at some point encounter, experience a, a mood disorder in our lives. 30% of us will experience uh, an anxiety disorder. 25% of all women are taking SSRIs, antidepressants, and 5% of all men. And more than 40% of both sexes admit that they eat just to make, try to make themselves happier. So we're having some problems. What happened to us? <clears throat> well, a lot of things happened to us. Uh, the recession happened. I mean, we are all people, not just Americans, we're a very reactive species. But also there's something, uh, the difference between what uh, scientists call socioeconomic status, how mm -hmm. much money you make, and sociometric, which mm -hmm. is how you compare to the people around you. Well, in the pre-paparazzi days, pre-reality TV, mm -hmm pre-Facebook, the people you compared to were just the people you see. Mm. Now we can see everybody. Yeah. So even if my job is pretty good, mm. I'm not comparing well when yes. I look at Donald <laughs> Trump else. and yes. Bill Gates. Yeah. <clears throat> How closely is mm. happiness tied to success? Exactly. Happiness is tied to success if your aspirations and your assets keep pace. So if someone earns $170,000 a year, that's nice. Yeah. You're in the top 5%. But if you're dreaming of living like a 1%er or, or a 0.1%er, you're going to be unhappy mm -hmm. and you're going to feel somehow frustrated yeah. at the money. <laughs> I, I think you just hit on it. Whether your aspirations <laughs> meet your assets. Well, I think exactly. that's definitely. Yeah. Most people have high aspirations that don't, their assets okay. don't meet. But yeah. beyond money, what mm -hmm. else is it that, that makes people unhappy? Is it relationships? Is it family? Is it relationships? Do it. Stress does it. Anything that dampens their fascinating MRI brain right. studies mm -hmm. that yeah. show with, that, yeah. that mm -hmm. um, when you are distracted by something, you're happy across four different brain regions. Your happiness reactions stop, and this is the case even when. Uh, researchers put people in MRIs and say, just try to remember an eight-digit number while looking at happy pictures. Mm -hmm. They'd show that while they're distracted doing that, happiness goes down. So if your stress is, when's the next layoff coming? What are my deadlines? Yes. Your happiness is just going to be smothered. You know, you, you mm. say in the article, because we've all been taught money can't buy you happiness. I used to always think only rich people said that, by the way. Right, Because exactly. I, I think you have to have meaning to your money. Right. But in the article, you said maybe you can buy happiness with money. Well, that certainly gives you options. It certainly gives you options. And that's an interesting study. This is something called the Easterlin Paradox. It was first promulgated in 1974 that said you hit a satiation point. And after a certain level, more money doesn't make any difference. New studies have found that that actually isn't true. And in fact, in rich countries, the happiness bump you get from, say, a 10% increase in income is actually greater than what you get in a poor country, even though a little bit of additional income when you're poor should make a bigger happiness And difference. how important are genetics and happiness? Genetics, this is my favorite part of this story. <clears throat> People have long argued that there may be something to be said for an immigrant gene. A certain group of people have the wherewithal, the grit, to get up, to tolerate risk, and I go across that. the world. And in fact, new studies of two genes, it's a, an alpha alphabet soup of names for the genes, but two different genes have turned up in greater concentrations in immigrant populations and they're genes that code for risk tolerance, that code for an appetite for novelty, that code for enjoyment of the seeking behavior, not even necessarily just, just achieving the, the pursuit goal, is, just the pursuit, and that's where we get pursuit of Which happiness. is really interesting if you think about America as a nation of immigrants. That's right, exactly. Yeah. So we have hot housed that immigrant temperament here, and 238 years later, it's still with us. But you're saying if we look at our genetic code of those people who are not immigrants, they could find out whether they had the immigrant genes or not. That's right, and you can, it's two very key genes, right. and you often find in cultures with a lower immigrant population or collectivist cultures. There's something to be said for the total yeah. immersion collectivist yeah. culture, say, of the Far East. And those are, they, they have their own very yeah. particular values and, 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 yeah. and things yeah. to I mean, all of this is, is, is uh, in a sense, 
uh, apparent to me when we talk to people about find something that you're passionate about. Right. That's right. I mean, That's because right. if you're passionate about your work, Right. That can greatly influence a success right. and b happiness. Well, that's right. And some of the one of the features in our, our cover package is quotes from famous people. And Steve Jobs uh, said, "If you haven't found the thing that makes you happy when you go to work in the morning, find something else because you won't be good at it until you're happy with it." And don't do it in moderation. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a good relationship is always a good. A thing. good this relationship is, a good relationship is always a good everything. thing. That's yeah. right. This is a running <laughs> argument yes. between Charlie and I. Are but in the pursuit of happiness right. about about um, whether to use moderation <laughs> or to throw that out the window. She, she says she thinks there are certain things you ought to be moderate about, and, and I actually agree with her, but I also yeah. think that there are lots of things you ought to be passionate about. Well, which I agree with this, which yeah. I agree with yeah. it as yeah. well. Yeah. To be thrilled. I mean, to be able to say, I would do this even if I wouldn't get paid for it. We are blessed. Those I'm not saying that, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, no. I mean, we like our job a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go there. You, you Don't can go stop there. talking yeah. now, Jeffrey. Okay. <laughs> now I've gone into fantasy good. land. Yes. Oh, we're yeah. going to be on the phone to Time Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Let me keep my current payment. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thank you. Uh,